Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where we attempt to provide uh, some enlightenment, perhaps some enhancements to your life that you can use in, on an everyday basis. Uh, I am Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair and your host for this program. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be Riva, and I'm a medical graduate. And on my right would be. I'm Megan. I'm a physician assistant student from Chatham University. And today we're delighted to have a uh, very special guest uh, that I'm certain I hope everybody has their ears open today and hear the words he says. We have uh, Krishna Panjala, and I'll ask Christian to introduce himself. Thank you, Jim. Um, I've always enjoyed Seclair for multiple reasons. One, because I think very few physicians truly understand the role of the mind and the body together. I think uh, what's happened is medicine has been divided into body medicine and head medicine when really all we have is one body which includes the mind and that bifurcation has led to a whole host of issues which I'll get into in a minute because I'm just dealing with a couple of things myself. Before that uh, uh, my name is Krishna Pendiala, as Jim, probably one of the few people who pronounced my name correctly. Thank you, Jim. Uh, stated, I am officially the president of the Mindful Nation Foundation, an organization inspired by Congressman Tim Ryan, who wrote a great book called A Mindful Nation. And our whole thesis is how can we create an environment in each community that fosters better self care? taking better care of those around you and overall building a more fulfilled and rewarding life for all of us in this country. That's my uh, philanthropic effort and personally I also do a lot of workshops and the latest workshop which I basically came up last night so you'll be the first one to hear is called Enter the Alpha Zone which is Conscious Effectiveness and the role of this workshop is to really master the art of judgment and we can get into that in a little bit but what I do is I'm a speaker and I speak on topics like um, choice making as opposed to decision making I'll, I'll also talk about a concept called thinking is the box because we hear the phrase things outside the box as of today I have not had anyone been able to show me where the box is so obviously it has to be in the mind. So the notion of think outside the box is almost an oxymoron because you cre your thinking is what created the box. So those are the kinds of uh, topics that I typically deal with uh, in my professional life as at a personal level and my whole goal is to help people make better choices in their life because so many of us are depending on the next president or the next government or the next somebody external to solve our problems. I don't think that's where the answer lies. The answer really lies inside and we are, if we were a product of our choices or as another gentleman put it, some of our choices and I always say you can choose either one whether you like multiplication or addition, some or product that's your choice but in the end you are a product or some of your choices so guess who has control over choice? You do. Each one of us does. So nobody teaches this topic anywhere. So those are the kind of areas of interest, Jim, that uh, brings me to this uh, space. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, absolutely. And uh, for the rest of the telecast today, for the rest of the broadcast, I'm going to ask our uh, viewers and people here to reset their clocks to Buddha Standard Time, which is the present moment. And I'm going to ask the audience what time it is. Now. It's right now. It's, it's now o'clock. So we're, we're going to uh, stay in the present moment. Uh, there's so much that I'd like to uh, discuss with Krishna. However, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to start off when he, talk, when he started on his journey. And he talks about being 18 and paralyzed and rainbows in the cobwebs. And what led you to this realization? That's an interesting question. So there's a, I love that phrase, rainbows and cobwebs, because if you've ever seen a dewdrop on a cobweb, usually in their sunlight you'll see a beautiful rainbow but most of us just hate cobwebs right the moment you say cobwebs you go e or if by chance you walk through one you have this you know whole resistive reaction 
But if you really look at the cover, there is such intricacies in it. And as I said, if there is a dewdrop, you will see beautiful rainbows of the sunlight. And so even in adverse situations, you can see if you choose to, again, this is where the power of choice comes in, beauty. And uh, even now, interestingly, Jim, you talked about those beautiful stories about my children. At that time, they were 10 and 8. Now they're 16 and 14, which is a whole different age to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so the stories are not so pretty or so sweet. So interestingly, we have a lot of conflict now. And how do I deal with conflict? So even to, today, we had a situation where my son wants to drive and I ask him why because he's 16 and uh, given the statistics of accidents and risk at that age, there's a lot of risk involved. So I say learn to drive, focus on the learning, not on getting the license, which is equal to learning the material, not the grade. And too much of our focus is on the grade and not the learning. And so we end up with, and those are subtle distinctions, most, most of the world cares about grades. I care about learning. I believe if you master learning, you'll get the grade. But I know for a fact you can get a grade without learning. I'm a testament to that, so <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you you can do that. And Absolutely. So the question really is how do you, to look at rainbows and cobwebs, even this morning, uh, so I'm having some serious ankle pain right now, so I was at the hospital this morning, and I told my wife, I am happy to go through this pain if we can learn something out of it. That's an attitude. That's a choice. I can sit and bitch about my pain, but I'm saying there is a price to pay for everything. Do not, I am prepaying, I said. So I bet. <laughs> Well, quite often here at Seclair, Krishna, we assist people. One of our biggest jobs is to help people take their choices back. The power that we have given to people, places, things, circumstances, and events. And in the 12-step in, in the world, what we talk about often is people who have the glasses in their lenses reversed and can only view the negatives in life rather than, rather than the positives. I constantly use the phrase uh, glass half full and glass half empty, which is a, bit, a direct parallel because I think the world is divided into those two categories of people. Either you choose to see it half full or half empty. And I got to tell you a story. Every night I got to take uh, a medication before going to bed. So I look at the counter in the kitchen and almost every night there is a glass which about two inches of water left over. And I could choose to say, here we go again, somebody didn't put the glass in the sink. Or say, that's enough for my medication. And I always smile, oh, somebody left some water for me. That's a choice again, because you can easily say, I told them to put their glasses in the sink. They'll never do it. And that story can be one choice. The other choice is, every night I smile because somebody has left a glass with just <laughs> enough water for me to take the medicine. Uh, perhaps you could uh, share with our audience and uh, keeping in mind that Krishna is the author of uh, our book here, Beyond the Pig and the Ape, Realizing Success and Happiness. And a great deal of what Krishna brings across is becoming, is becoming present and aware. I'm particularly uh, uh, a fan of your comment that do what you want today that does not ruin your tomorrow. Thank you, Jim. That's, I think, uh, came, uh, actually, that has a direct parallel to living one day at a time. Because a lot of uh, uh, people advise folks to live one day at a time. And you'll have the smart aleck say, if I'm not going to live tomorrow, might as well blow everything today because there is no tomorrow. And that's why to catch the smart aleck, I got this two days at a time because if you can do whatever you choose to do today, as long as it doesn't jeopardize your tomorrow because then you can live all your life because life is a series of today's and tomorrow's. Ab ab absolutely. So uh, could you talk to us a little bit about your concept of the pig, the ape, uh, the you? Absolutely, thank you. So about 15 years ago I felt that a lot of our challenges stem from 
our inability to delay gratification. So our need for instant gratification makes us make some choices which are truly uh, please us in the present but lead to fairly dis you know, negative long-term circumstance consequences. Therefore, I wanted to write a book on delaying instant gratification and then I thought, how boring would that be? So I created this acronym called the PIG, which is pursuing instant gratification. And then came the APE, which was avoiding painful experiences, which are the kind of two ways how we tend to go towards things or avoid things, which is basically the notion of pleasure and avoiding pain, seeking pleasure and avoiding pain, which is not I, something I discovered, but everybody knows. But I tried to couch it in such a way to create some memorable acronyms so that people, A, get it, it's sticky and it's friendly, people like animals. So the pig and ape, not only do they uh, resemble the behavior of the animals they represent, but also are these acronyms for pursuing instant gratification and avoiding painful experiences. So at that level, and they are the operate at the level of instinct, our survival instincts. But when you get past your survival instincts and you start engaging your intellect, so you have, I call it the three eyes of judgment. And now I've added a fourth eye because when I wrote the book, it was three eyes and now I added a fourth. So there is the instinct, then there is intellect where you apply your mind and when you apply your mind it can have two states one state is when you are present aware and devoid of ego and the other state is completely consumed by the ego and that is the notion of the big you and the small you where you have the big you which is your intuition or your higher natural self or your higher self and then there is your lower self or your egoic self which is consumed by image and what other people think and how you want to look in the world. So those are the three levels where you, are, you can operate at the level of instinct, you can operate at the level of intellect in one of two states. At the level of intellect you can be in your ego or beyond your ego and then there's another level which is the power, the state of intuition which is much beyond even our intellect and our instincts. That's uh, that's that's amazing things. And sometimes when I'm with patients, uh, Krishna, and they tell me these thoughts, and I'll ask them, whose voice is that? I'll say, whose voice is that? And I'm particularly, and I often suggest to people that they are not, they are not those thoughts, and they are not them. And I'm particularly interested in one of the things what you call to be aware of the imposter, to be aware of the imposter. And these young ladies are going to uh, become imposters right now, Krishna. Absolutely. So we all actually wear masks and sometimes it's called makeup, sometimes it's called a mask. In fact, uh, it was like that too. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because I remember back in 87 or 88 when I was fairly new to all this, I had this person, I knocked on this person's door and the lady said, let me put my face on and come out. Could you please wait? It took me a while to interpret that because I didn't know what that meant. I know you you guys do. Let me put my face on. And I didn't know, what do you mean put your face on? You can take your face off. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty amazing. But later I realized that meant that she didn't have makeup on. And very interesting, it, and she, she was a new acquaintance and it was until much, much, much later did I ever see without makeup and it was I couldn't even recognize the two people so had I never seen this other face and I could have walked right into a mall and never known that this was this good friend of mine and that's the power of how we choose to show ourselves for whatever reason and there's no judgment here but that was it really shocked me that they could say that I let me put my face on which means they're identifying with that face more than their own face. Could you talk a little bit about addressing the imposter that everyone has in their in their head, Krishna? So thank you, Jim. The imposter really is whoever 
our mind creates for us, the image or the identity that our mind creates for us. How do we want to show up in the world? Are we comfortable being ourselves or do we need to have a pretense of being something else? And usually it stems from the fact that we don't like ourselves the way we are. And I know a lot of us struggle with that for a variety of reasons that you guys are better qualified to speak to but I find this purely from observation that because of our the way we feel about who we are and most of the time we are in lost in thought or lost in perceptions or lost in managing perceptions of other, uh, others' perceptions of us. So that's the game we get caught up and then our mind creates an identity for us. So the whole thing is a pseudo game. Mm -hmm. And do you often find that people try to outsmart themselves, Krishna, that uh, they make uh, their life a whole lot more complicated than it is? Sometimes when I'm dealing with an individual like that, I'll ask them, uh, how many sides does a circle have? And I actually had one person bring out a, uh, a computer and a calculator, and a, uh, they wanted to measure all the angles. And I suggested to them that it may be simply as uh, a circle has an inside and an outside. Uh, could you help us to share with us how you help people find their authentic selves and make some sense, make, a, make some simplicity out of an overly complicated life. Wow. That's a very tough uh, and uh, situational question. Usually I don't have a recipe, Jim. You have to listen to what's going on in their life. And many times all you do is ask questions and the answer emerges from within. How well do you, you know, you have children, you have friends, how well does it work telling somebody something? <laughs> it just doesn't work. So telling somebody the answer, and most likely I don't pretend to even know the answer. Mm -hmm. The answer is within. And as a teacher, my role and a coach is to create an environment for the answer to come out to them. That is the role of a teacher because I remember very distinctly when I used to actually teach, I heard a comment from a great gentleman, Jim Galway, who said, I'm more committed to teaching than people learning. I and hear you. I hear you. And quite often, here at Seclair, we have a, a person-based center philosophy where we truly believe that each individual has a great capacity for understanding themselves and resolving their own problems and and that's uh, and that's an area of life you talk about instant gratification we run into many people Krishna who want to plant an apple seed in the morning and pick apples in the afternoon yeah so uh, what was your question Jim I agree with you <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, we're running a little bit out of uh, time for today. Uh, however, uh, we certainly would like to uh, thank Krishna for joining us. And hopefully sometime in the future, uh, should he find the time, he can pros prob prob possibly come in here to Seclair and maybe do an, an extended type of interview. Do we have any thoughts, uh, any thoughts Megan? Um, I just want to say thank you for providing the simple, I guess, framework that you've developed to think through how we function with the ape and the pig. And I really appreciate it because as an adult, I definitely find myself liking animals, but I know that children can relate too, so I also appreciated the stories that you shared about your children. And I think it's very powerful to have a frame of reference that many people can uh, use for their thank, life. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate that, Megan. Reva? Uh, Thank you, Krishna. Um, I've read your thing. I've read your blogs, and it was quite insightful. Um, I am myself into a lot of this uh, self development stuff. So, I mean, it act you actually simplified all of, all of those stuff for me, and wow. I'm really looking forward to read your book. Well, thank you, because the goal of writing the book was really to take to simplify things. And both of you kind of validated that, so I truly appreciate your feedback. And as usual, uh, we before we sign off, we offer a free prescription every week, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, fish without bait where there's no expectations. And we have a special little uh, little ending today. 
Uh, we understand that it is uh, Krishna's birthday today, and we're going to be celebrating Mike Sorg's birthday, our media person, on Wednesday, and we'd like to uh, sing you happy birthday, Krishna, and to Mike. Happy Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Krishna and Mike, happy birthday to you. And Krishna, we're going to eat your cake. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Hey, happy birthday, Mike. To continue this conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google+, Plus, or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube backslash Seclair Video, and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as usual, we have an assignment for everyone out there. Please be good to yourself, and I'm going to steal this from Krishna, as long as it does not ruin your tomorrow. Until then, namaste.